What's up guys, this is Child Support School, class is in session. Um, today I'm gonna to make a quick video on uh, what to expect when you actually go after child custody to fix child support in terms of allegations that you're gonna get from the other side, okay? Um, nothing here is gonna constitute legal advice. It's not an invitation to uh, establish an attorney-client relationship. This is for informational purposes only. Okay, jump right in. All right, so you know I've said in other videos that the number one defense to child support is, um, or at least having jacked up child support, is going after and establishing child custody. All right, so most of the time, that's gonna that's going to look like a petition to establish paternity. All right, why paternity? All right, so paternity applies to anyone who had a kid and was not married to the other parent. All right. So if you guys were married and you were going through a divorce, per the, you know, pursuant to the law, the eyes of the law, they would already see you as the, the legal parent of the child. So you wouldn't have to establish your parental rights because you were married, they're automatically assumed to you, all right? So in this case, most places in the United States that I'm aware of, if you have a kid and you're the dad and you weren't married to the mom, then you have no legal rights to the child. Like you don't have the right to go see the child. You don't have the right to, uh, you know, be a part of and, and join in with important decisions related to the child. Uh, it's messed up, really. I mean, I've seen cases where the mom, you know, packed up a U-Haul and was going to leave the state with the child, and um, you know, dad pulled up with the cops right in the mouth of the driveway, and the cops said, "Sir, I'm sorry." You haven't established paternity, so there's nothing we can do. They had to watch mom drive off. And at that point, you're stuck with a long distance schedule. Now, that may not apply to most of you, but I'm just using that as an example so you can kind of see how deep it goes when you know you have issues because you know maybe mom's not letting you see the kid. Um, maybe mom's you know gone after you for child support through the circuit court or maybe through the state of Florida. Uh, um, I'm sorry, maybe through the circuit court or maybe through the state that you live in. Um, through the Department of Revenue, um, and then you're like, hey, I need to go establish some custody. And again, backtracking, that's really important because it, in the vast majority of places in the United States, child support is going to be calculated based very largely on how many overnights the kid spends with you in a given year. All right, That's why you hear, hey, I want 50-50 or I need 60-40. That is people, you know, this is a percentage ratio that people are calculating of how many overnight stays the kid is going to spend with them during the year. Okay, so, you know, that magic number that everyone's trying to get to is 50-50. Um, you know, that's usually going to be that sweet spot where, you know, you're getting enough time with the kid to have a good relationship, but also, you know, you've got enough overnights with the child so that you're not going to get, you know, jacked up on child support. Right, and have your life ruined financially, like, like I've mentioned in some of the other videos in this channel. Um, so the big thing that I think a lot of dads aren't really ready for, or maybe they don't think about it, or maybe they're in denial. Um, I know, because I see it every, every single day, is you know what kind of accusations mom is going to throw their way uh, when, when dad goes to establish his rights, okay? Look, moms, I'm not picking on you guys, okay? Some, you know, a lot of times we represent moms filing these cases and it's the shoes on the other foot and dad's making allegations against mom. But most of the time, when the specific dynamic that I'm addressing in this video is it's gonna be dad going after uh, establishment of his parental rights so that he can fix some jacked up child support or protect himself from paying more child support than he's supposed to, okay? So... Picture this, all right? So mom, maybe for the last six months to three or four years, has um, been in total control of all of the time sharing of the child, all the decisions related to the child. She's got to pick and choose when you get to see your kid, and it's not very often. It's based on her, you know, her whims. Maybe she's, you know, you know, hooked up with a new sugar daddy. Maybe she's getting married. There's going to be a stepdad, and she would just love to have him just slide right in there and fill that role as dad, all right? It's messed up, it's not right, I know, but it happens every day. Um, suddenly, we come in, we swoop in, and mom gets served with, you know, paperwork, uh, you know, wanting to establish your parental rights and wanting to get 50-50 time with the child. Like this, I can't explain it, all right? But for some reason, with the ladies, and, and ladies, you, you know, 
you back me up on this if, if you agree with me. Um, you know, that is going to come across as like a mortal threat to them, okay? They're going to take that as, you know, you're trying to take their kid away from them. And they're going to, you know, the, the knives are going to come out, right? Um, the gloves are going to come off. And uh, it, that is like a slap across the face, a shot across the bow. But, Dad, you got to do it. I mean, you got to establish your parental rights. It's the only way you're going to have a relationship with your kid. It's the only way you're going to be able to avoid getting all, you know, getting totally like buried in child support. So you got to do it. But you just have to understand that when you do it, it's going to most of the time just invoke just so much raw just emotion from mom. It's going to scare the crap out of her. You know, regardless of how hard she acts, you know, about it, how cool she plays it, it's, it's, it's going to be very scary for her. And, um, and so what happens when someone's backed into a corner, right? They, they sit down, they think about, hey, wh how do I defend myself here? And then they do it. They defend themselves. And so the most popular, I don't want to say popular, the absolute most common way that you're going to see that when you're filing to establish your parental rights is by mom making allegations against you. All right. It can be anything. It can be he drinks too much. He smokes too much pot. He, um, he drives drunk. He drives drunk with the kid in the car. He spanks our kid too much. In the relationship, he was passed out on the couch and, you know, and he, he urinated himself and he was in, passed out in a pool of his own vomit and the child was in a pack and play there. And he was, that was his idea of babysitting. Or there was this time that I had to call the cops five years ago because we were in an argument, you know, and we lived together happily since then. But, uh, you know, now all of a sudden and he had me served. It's this big problem and he's violent and I'm scared of him and our child's in danger. And boo, I, I'm so scared for the safety of our child. I mean, the list really just goes on and on and on. I mean, it, it, it can go as far as, you know, he lets his mom he doesn't actually spend time with our kid. He just picks up our kid and drops the kid off with his mom. And then he goes and, and lives his life. And the grandma is, is, you know, trying to turn the kid against me. I mean, there is an unlimited amount of accusations that the other parent can throw at you and probably will, okay, um, when you file this, all right? So, you know, and, and one of the first questions I ask dads on consultations at my law firm is, hey, what's mom going to accuse you of? You know, and, and the, the most common answer is, you know, there's nothing she can accuse me of. I, I am absolutely squeaky clean. There's absolutely nothing she can accuse me of. And I say, well, you know, I, I think you're going to be wrong here. I think you're going to be wrong. She is going to accuse you of something. What do you think it's going to be? No, it's, it's nothing. There's nothing she can call. Okay, let's wait and see. And it's always, they always end up saying, I can't believe she would say that. There's absolutely no way that she would ever do that. I can't believe it. There's no validity. That's total bullshit. And I mean, it's just, it always happens. It's 99.9% .9 of the time. So just get ready for it. Um, if you already know what she's going to accuse you of, that's great because, you know, you can get started now gathering evidence, get, you know, text messages, uh, uh, photos, um, you know, Facebook or Twitter or, or you know, uh, social media um, posts, um, you know, maybe that she's put out or something like that, uh, that are going to show that, you know, that are going to go to, you know, disprove whatever it is she can accuse you of. And I'm going to give you a couple examples. And, you know, the video would have to be 10 years long for me to actually, like, cover everything that could possibly come. But I just want to get your minds thinking, uh, you know, about, you know, get your mind kind of focused in this direction, because if I can at least get you thinking about this, you're going to come up with, hey, yeah, this is what she's going to say, I bet. And, and you know what? Oh, yeah, I got text. I remember that text conversation. So here we go. All right. So uh, some of the maybe the two or three most common ones, um, you know, he, he's violent. He committed an act of domestic violence against me. OK. Um, so how many times has she called the cops during an argument? All right. Let's pinpoint those dates. OK. Write them down, you know, recall them to the best of your ability. And then let's go in and, you know, let's find some text conversations between you guys for like maybe a day later or, or a week later, right? Let's see how cool you guys were. Let's see how, you know, you guys were talking about, you know, hey, uh, you know, a week after she called the cops during that fight, you know, she was thanking you for laying pipe the night before. Something like that that's going to show 
that's going to show that she's not scared of you. She wasn't scared of you, right? If she wasn't scared of you two days after this alleged thing happened, she's not going to be scared of you two years later, right? It, it does make sense. And it's just going to, it's just going to make all this, these, these statements that, oh, I'm so scared. It, it just eviscerates that in my experience most of the time, okay? There might even be text conversations that are even better than that, right? You know, where, oh, yeah, you're such a good dad. You know, oh, God, you're so good. You're so good to that boy. You know, anything like that, especially if it's a couple days after she's claiming that you were driving drunk with the, with the child, right? Or that you, you, you know, committed an act of domestic violence involving the child, right? Any of that stuff, the, the, those are, you know, when we're talking about in, entering evidence, like hearsay, um, and, you know, that's anything that she says, um, it can be admissible because it's an admission by a party opponent. Um, and so, you know, any of that stuff can be very valuable. And you need to be thinking about this now because I cannot tell you how often my clients are telling me, damn it, you know, I had, I had the perfect text conversation in my old phone, but now it's gone, right? I switched, I upgraded my phone and I just couldn't, I couldn't transfer it over. So now it's gone, All right? Don't, don't lose that, okay? You know if the, having a court case is in your future, right? You know, the, I don't care how good it's, how good things are going right now, right? You know in your heart if you are destined to end up one day going to court with this lady, all right? Don't let good evidence like that go down the toilet, all right? You have to be saving that. Take a screenshot of the text conversation. Just email it to yourself, right? It's the easiest thing ever. If you got a, if you got a smartphone, which everybody does, just screenshot that shit, hit the little arrow button and email it to yourself and just forget it. Just don't delete it, but don't forget it. You, you will always have a, a electronic copy of that evidence forevermore, right? You don't have to worry about getting some fancy app to save all your texts. Just take a screen. If you got, oh, you know what? That, that's damn. She said, I'm, a, I'm a, an amazing dad. Let me just screenshot that. Let me just email that to myself just in case for the future file, right? For the child's, call it child support school file. I don't care. But, I mean, it's important, okay? So that's one. Another one is that he drinks too much. Um, you know, this one's a little, a, a little more difficult, um, you know, because this one is usually going to be her word against his. Um, I've had moms actually, you know, come with photos of, of my client passed out drunk in the living room, right? You know, um, so be careful. You're taking a nap on the couch watching football on a Sunday. If she's trying to set you up, she might set a damn, I I'm telling you, I've seen it. She might set a few, a few beer cans around you and snap a picture of you. And all of a sudden, that's exhibit A, you know, with her motion for temporary, you know, majority time sharing as to why you shouldn't have unsupervised time with your kid because you're a drunk, you're a lush, you're passed out on the sofa, you know, with the child in the pack and play next to you. When you're just, you know, you're just taking a nap. I have seen it and you cannot put this past anyone when they're getting ready for litigation and they feel like you're going to take their kid away, um, it, the gloves really come off. So you really got to watch yourself, okay? Um, and look, I'm not trying to destroy relationships here. Like, I'm not trying to create suspicion and, uh, you know, make you not trust your, your significant other anymore. But the vast majority of the times so you're going to be watching a video like this, you're no longer in a relationship with her. Um, you're trying to see your kid. She won't let you see your kid that much. Um, and she's going after you for child support or has already successfully gone after you for child support. And you're trying to figure out how the hell to fix it. Um, so you just need to be ready for this stuff. And if you know, again, if you know the allegations she's going to throw, then you're able to start getting together evidence while the evidence still exists before it goes away. All right. Um, back to the drinking one. Um, you know, she's usually going to have to prove that you're an alcoholic. Um, you know, just her words are, aren't always going to be enough. Um, there's, she's usually going to point to some specific instances. Oh, you know, there was this time we went out on the boat and, uh, you know, he was drinking heavily on the boat and he tried to get behind the wheel, you know, with our kid in the backseat. And I said, no, something small like that. Believe me, it's going to get blown up the size of the Goodyear blimp when you when you go after her to establish your parental rights. Um, you know, if you got a DUI, man, in the last few years, 
she's going to be, that is going to be like, you know, New York Times, page one, you know, your honor, look how, look how screwed up and, and drunk this guy is all the time. I mean, he even got a DUI. Yeah, so, you know, that sort of thing you got to watch out for. Um, you know, if you've got some sort of criminal, uh, criminal record that is going to support the allegation she's making, well, now we're, we're into a point where we got to rehabilitate that, right? We got to, um, you know, let's, let's do, uh, you know, hell, let's do a, uh, um, you know, let's do some alcohol counseling, right? Let's voluntarily do a, an alcohol evaluation, you know, and just show that, uh, you know, show the evaluation outcome that you that there's no, no findings, no concern. Right. Let's, um, you know, let's let's as soon as the case, this is my favorite thing to do. Um, as soon as I file a case and I know that mom is making allegations against my client, let's say that he's um, let's say that he smokes crack. Right. We file a petition to establish paternity and 50 50 time sharing and child support for my client who's the dad. Mom files an answer and a counter petition saying that he smokes crack. He buys, you know, he takes the child with him to buy crack. He sells crack with the child in the car. I don't know. You know just think of the most horrible freaking thing that you can possibly think of. And that's probably, you know, that, that might be what they, what they accuse you of. Um, what I love to do, and, and I recommend this to anybody, not legal advice though, okay? Yeah. Um, but, you know, file a request to produce or, or, a, or, a, or a comp, comp in your jurisdiction, a comparable discovery demand and demand every shred of evidence that she has that you smoke crack or that you have exposed the child to crack or alcohol or pot or violence or fill in the blank, anything, okay? Um, and demand a list with contact information and address of every single witness that she has in her mind that she thinks could possibly, um, uh, you know, provide information that you smoke crack or that you drink or that you smoke pot or fill in the blank, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I, and then she has 30 days in most places to, to submit that stuff. And if she doesn't submit it, which she's not, they never file their response on time. So they, I always get to go after them with a motion to compel. I'll explain more on that in another video, um, how to enforce discovery deadlines and stuff. Um, but always go after them. Always, I, I always will make them file that response saying that the answer is does not exist, right? Because we got to establish very early on that, you know, hey, I demand through the courts, through the jurisdiction that the court has, I demand through the, through the rules of discovery in this jurisdiction, I demand that you give me every shred of evidence that you have against me that I smoke crack or that I beat your ass or any of this, right? They make them file a response that says the answer is does not exist, right? Because... Most of the time it doesn't. And you want to establish very early on in your case that that evidence does not exist and that she's just blowing hot air and that she cannot prove it. Okay, because that's going to that's gonna really clear things up. You don't want to let allegations like that just float around in limbo if your case is going on for six months or 12 months. You don't want those allegations just float around out there because as long as they're floating around and they're not disproven but they're not proven, sh the other side is going to absolutely hang on to those accusations, hang their hat on them, and just use that as a chance to minimize your time with your kid and make the case difficult for you as much as they possibly can, right? And I like to get, honestly, I like to get in front of a judge as early and fast as possible for a temporary, uh, temporary custody hearing to uh, make them prove up, make them prove their allegations, right? Because most of the time they can't, it's just hot air. Now, if you live in a jurisdiction that, you know, like I do, that's going to make you go to mediation before you can get in front of a judge for temporary custody hearings, um, then just get to mediation as fast as you can, right? Um, you know, you want to do some discovery first so you can address child support, maybe settle it at mediation, but you want to get to mediation as fast as you can because for a lot of dads, if mom is not letting you see your kid, and you live in a jurisdiction where they're going to require you to go to mediation before you can get in front of a judge for any sort of custody, whether it's temporary or at trial, um, then a lot of times mediation is going to be a, a hurdle, like it's a barrier for you to get in front of the judge to get some court-ordered time with your kid, right? Now, I don't want you to look at mediation. Now, every, everywhere, everyone listening to this, 
mediation in a, in, in a circuit court custody case is, is probably in your future, right? Most courts require it. Um, so, you know, most cases settle at or around mediation, right? It's a very good thing. And so I usually don't look at mediation as just like some stepping stone to get to court. In fact, I, I like get really pissed off when I have uh, other attorneys who do that, right? Um, but if, you, if you're dying without your kid and, and she's not letting you see your kid, um, you know, you might have to just rush through mediation just to get in front of a judge, you know, get some temporary time sharing and then set another mediation, right? Um, and, but that second time, you know, actually like sit down and take your time with it and try to settle the case. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of stuff here. So, so here's the thing. Um, you, I can't sum up, no one could ever sum up establishing custody to fix child support, um, in just one video, right? So this is going to be a really long process. There's going to be a lot of videos where, um, you know, we go through this, um, and, you know, it's child support school part of child support, part of fixing child support, part of, you know, insulating yourself from unfair child support is going after court ordered time with your kids. And so this is going to be a huge part of this channel. Um, you know, this video is about allegations that are going to come your way, kind of what to expect, how to address it. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot more videos. So stay tuned. Um, if you like this content, you know, hit the thumb, uh, you know, like, like this video. Um, if, uh, if you like this, if you're going through something like this, if you know someone who's going through something like this, if you think you might go through something like this in the future, subscribe to this channel. Um, in addition to these videos that I'm putting out, um, I'm also developing some courses, um, you know, that I'm going to link to in the description once they, uh, um, once they drop, you know, it's going to be kind of like a, uh, child support tactical toolkit, um, child custody tactical toolkit. Um, you know, because I find that, you know, most, most normal, hardworking people, you know, you know, attorneys are just too damn expensive and, you know, they, they're stuck representing themselves and there's just not enough, you know, good information out there for them. And uh, so I'm trying to change that, you know, I'm trying to change that with this channel, trying to change that by developing some, some cheap courses, you know, that we can put out there and make, make this stuff more available for folks. So just check back. All right. So, um, all right, that's it. Uh, class dismissed. Um, again, this does not constitute legal advice, um, but uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging through to the end. Um, spending this time with me. Um, I'll see you in the next one.